which should work pretty well. Let's see, I'll put some back in the supply. Uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, these are good boards. Uh, no, still no sign of Mary. She's been gone for so long, off visiting her cousin Elizabeth. Whew. Well, that gives me time to work on this special surprise I'm making for her and the new baby. Oh, yeah, that baby. Elizabeth was having a baby. That's why, that's why Mary went off to visit her. It's interesting, though. Elizabeth's so old, I just, I don't know how she could ever have a baby. She and Zacharias are ancient. That'd be impossible. Well, but I keep forgetting, nothing's impossible with God. I mean, look at how Mary's going to be having a baby. That's a miracle, too. Wow. I hope she's okay. I really... Joseph! Oh, Mary, oh, look at you! <laughs> you look beautiful. And, uh, how do I hug you now with a... Well, that's different. You've got... Oh, how is the baby? Good. And how are you? Good. I, I miss, miss you, you so much. <laughs> yeah. I have so much to tell you. So Elizabeth had her baby boy. She did? Yeah. It was a boy. Yeah, it was a boy. And Zacharias named him John. And Zacharias can speak again. Wait. Zacharias couldn't speak? No, he was mute for nine months for the whole pregnancy of Elizabeth. What? Why would, why would that have happened? Why, why couldn't he talk? Because when the angel came to tell him about the pregnancy, he wouldn't believe him. So that was a consequence. Oh, for not believing the angel. Yeah. Not for, the, for not believing God. Yeah. Oh, man, Mary, I'm, I'm glad you believed God when the angel told you that you were going to have his son. Well, Joseph, I'm so glad you believed me when I told you that the angel talked to me. I mean, you could have accused me of lying to you. Yeah, I, you know, I did get pretty upset at first. I didn't know really what to think or to believe or what to do. But you know, then, then that, that next night the angel came to me, and he told me the same thing he told you, and he told me that that you were going to have a child that would be the son of God, that his name was going to be Jesus, just like he said to you, and, and that he was going to be the savior to save people from their sins. Oh, the Messiah. Wow, I'm so excited and so nervous too. I mean, can we really raise the Messiah, the Savior of the world? That seems so. I know. I mean, it's like, can we, how can we even be parents for a regular child, much less the Son of God? But yeah. we're just gonna have to keep believing that God is gonna help us. I'm sure He will send help for us. Um, so listen, it's not quite done yet, but. I have a surprise I've been working on for you. Yeah. Can I show it to you? Yeah. Yeah, so remember how you really wanted a crib? Yeah. All right, well, this is just one of the railings up for it, but you should come in. I'll show you the rest. Come on. Oh, awesome. Oh, man. I can't wait. It's been so long. The Messiah is finally, well, for all intents and purposes, he's here. My eternal captain. Oh, the ruler of all of us angels. And now he's the size of a cantaloupe sitting inside the belly of a human woman. <laughs> that's, just, that's just nuts. I can't believe that. Wow. Hey. Feels like we've been waiting for it. <laughs> I know. I've been saying the same thing. The prophecies to come <gasps> true. <sighs> it's just. And you know, now these last eight months for Mary's pregnancy, it feels like it's been double for her. I know. I know. I can't wait to see. Baby Jesus. The name is just so perfect, isn't it? I just love it. You know, of course, that in the language that the Hebrews speak, it's it's actually said Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which means it's exactly like who? Do you remember? Way back, think back, right after Moses. Joshua. Joshua, right, yeah. right. Remember when we got to help the children of Israel and they, they crossed the Red Sea and then they went and they, they conquered Jericho. Joshua was leading them in all of that. He led them to conquer all of Canaan. And now this Yeshua, this Jesus... He's coming to conquer Satan, and he's going to conquer the world. He'll just make everything right again. Oh, I know. I can hardly believe it. You know, I just, I just wish more people would believe it, though. More people believe, oh, about the Messiah? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, 
not so bad so far. I mean, we've got, let's see, who believes? Mary and Joseph, of course, and then Elizabeth, Zacharias. They, I'm sure they believe now, too. And then Simeon, the old guy who's been waiting. You know, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good group. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm so happy about those, but, I mean, what about the rest? Like, the priests and, and the Jewish leaders and yeah. the... the Teachers of scripture and the wise men of Israel. I mean, that's nice. No, nobody else believes. That's, that's true. That's true. I can see you're feeling kind of bummed about all that. Tell you what, would it cheer you up to know that there are some smart, intelligent men studying the scriptures, really wise men, who believe that the Messiah is coming? Really? Yeah. But that's not possible. I mean, I flew through the whole land of Israel looking. And I couldn't find any. Uh, well, they're not exactly in the land of Israel. They're uh, actually about, uh, let's see, which direction is this? Uh, they're, they're in uh, that direction over there, east. And uh, yeah, they're uh, about 400 miles out. 400 miles? Yeah. Oh, so they're not Jewish wise men then? No, no, they're not. But you know that doesn't really matter anyhow. It doesn't matter whether you're Jewish or not. As long as you're going to study God's word and listen and obey what it says, it doesn't matter where you're from. That's true. Yep. So, listen, 400 miles, I mean, you get there in just a couple seconds. Anyhow, we're angels. We can do that. So, why don't I show you where to go? You can travel over there tonight and go check it out. I'll tell you who to look for. Okay. Okay? Come on. Come on. Let me, let me show you a, a little bit of a star map here. All right. Let's see. Angelo said over by the Euphrates River. Okay. Here's a Euphrates a city and the sand. Oh, okay. Here we go. And he said, I should watch for an old man who would come out at night to look at stars. Everybody's really sleeping around here. Let's check. Oh, let's see. I think it was tonight. It's supposed to be the blue one. Right over. Sure enough, look at that. <laughs> Gaspar's calculations were correct. There's the blue star, just like we predicted. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't it's believe it's right. right. He's not, he hasn't mentioned the sign at all. Now, let's see. I was supposed to check on one other star tonight. Oh, oh I was supposed to check and see if there's that new star. The one that's coming up over Jacob. Right in that direction over there. Jacob? You mean like the man whose name was changed to Israel? Yep, 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 yep. You know, that's just how, that's just how uh, our ancestor Balaam said it one time in a prophecy hundreds of years ago. Yes, Balaam, he said, um, he said a star would come out of Jacob and a scepter would shine over Israel. Now, you know, uh, the, the uh, Hebrew leader Moses, he wrote it down in a big, big scroll. It's way bigger than this one. I couldn't possibly carry it. And in there, well, he wrote that down. And then my student, Balthazar, he was studying the big scroll of Moses, and he found that prophecy by Balaam. And you know what he did? He thinks that when we see a new star show up in the direction of the country of Israel, that means that the Jewish Prince Messiah is going to be born. How do you know the Messiah? That's right, that's right. You know, Gaspar tells me that there's a lot of prophecies about the Jewish Prince Messiah. In fact, he says that one of his favorite is found in the scroll. Well, you'll never believe what we found in this scroll. So, there's a, a big box we have passed on down to us from the Chaldeans of Babylon, that old city, it's not around anymore. But in that box, I found a scroll by a Jewish scholar named Daniel. Daniel? Mm -hmm. Daniel? Yes, sir. Do you know about the prophecies I told to Daniel? Oh, it's amazing. Those prophecies that Daniel has in that book, do you know that when you do the math and you start counting the way it says there in the Bible, in their, in their scrolls, do you know that it says... Well, that the Prince Messiah is probably going to be born right about now. I mean, like any day now. It's amazing. Wow. That's just amazing. You know, you're not a Jew, and yet you're studying the scriptures and learning about the Messiah? Now, do you believe what you've been hearing? Well, I think, uh, still no sign of that 
door over Jacob's. And sometimes I kind of feel like maybe we're just making it all up. And maybe it's not right. But you know what? All the other things that the Jewish God has said have come true in their prophecies. So it doesn't seem like he ever lies. We're going to keep on thinking. Well, we're going to keep on waiting. We're going to keep on being ready. I hope we've got our bags packed. We've got gifts, special gifts inside our bags. So that the minute that we see a new star show up over Israel, well, we're going to hop right on our camels and we'll go off to welcome the new king. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes you do believe. Um, of course, well, there's a little bit of discussion as to where we should go. We're not sure exactly where in Israel. You know, uh, I've got my favorite scroll right here. Now, in this scroll, this is written by one of the other Hebrew prophets. His name was uh, Micah. Micah was his name. And in there, Micah, he writes down that, that uh, uh, let's see how he put it. Uh, 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 Bethlehem, uh, a ruler will come out of Bethlehem. Uh, and, and, you know, it seems nice. To say, this seems pretty clear, except that Bethlehem is so tiny. Have you looked at the map? Oh, Bethlehem is a tiny little town. I don't see how a ruler could really come from there. Yeah, that prophecy's right. It does say Bethlehem. Uh, how are we going to get married to Bethlehem? I mean, Nazareth is, is over 90 miles away. At the same time, uh, Gaspar, my colleague, he looked at another book written by, uh, what was that uh, Hebrew prophet? His name? Zechariah is his name. Now, he says, Behold Jerusalem, your king comes to you riding on a donkey. So he says that that's where the, the prince is going to be, in Jerusalem. Although I think it's a little confusing, because how's a baby going to be riding a donkey anyways? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, so they keep arguing about it. No reason where we're going to end up going. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Whiteman. God will show you. No, yep, yep. Well, we're not going to worry at all. Yep. God's going to show us where to go. Very well. And, and, and you know where I'm going to go right now? I'm going to bed because it's late. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. These non Jewish wise men are studying the scripture and they believe God about the Messiah. That is so exciting. I should go talk to Angel because God has got to have a special plan to have a star shine over Israel so the wise men can follow it. Oh, and how are we going to get married to Bethlehem? I mean, she's not going to want to travel now that she's so pregnant. But you know what? God has a special plan for that too. Well, it looks like everything is coming together very quickly now for Jesus to be born. Mary and Joseph are back together, but like the angel said, they're in Nazareth. And the Old Testament prophecies say that Jesus is going to be born in Bethlehem, which is a long ways away. Boy, we're going to have to see how they could end up going down there. That's one thing the angel was wondering. And do you have any idea who that old man was? Who was that old man? A wise man. He was a wise man. Yeah, one of the wise men we hear about in the Bible. He's waiting to see when the star shows up in the sky, he's going to follow it wherever it goes. Is he believing what the Bible says? Yep. He's been reading and he read it and he said, this is what's true. I'm going to follow it and believe it. I hope each of you can learn to do that too. When you read something in the Bible and you see what it means, then you say, I believe it and I'll keep on following it. All right, let's say a quick prayer before we go to our worship study time, okay? Everybody close your eyes. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you watch over us and that you brought us here today for Sabbath school. Thank you for the stories from the Bible that we can see and that we can read and think about. Thank you that today we've been thinking about how you want us to listen to what you tell us in the Bible and to believe it. Thank you that Mary and Joseph believed what the angels told them. Thank you that the wise men believed. Please be with those around us who might have trouble believing and help us to encourage them to also believe you. We love you very much. Watch over the rest of our Sabbath school time now. Amen. Amen.